Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Sauce. We're into NFL Week 5 already. Thursday Night Football, we got an NFC South battle here. Bucks, Falcons in Atlanta. Let's go. Welcome to The Sauce. The Sauce. Get the sauce. All right, like I said, Tampa's on the road in Atlanta for this one. Falcons are laying one and a half points at home. This number's been bought down from two and a half, indicating some sharp action came in on the Tampa Bay side, or there was an injury update, and we'll get to that in a second. Total sitting at 44 mostly. There are a couple 43 and a halfs open. So let's take a look at the pie charts, and according to this data I don't trust, action's coming in pretty heavy on the Tampa Bay side. Over 70% of the tickets, about 85% of the money, but again, like I always say, take this data with a grain of salt. So let's take a look at some head-to-head -head history. Uh, the Bucks have taken seven of their last nine against the Falcons, seven and two in their last nine. Falcons have been covering last couple of years, three and one against the number in their last four against the Bucks. As far as the total, they've split the last two years, but check this out. Rewind back a little further in this rivalry. The over is 11 and three in the last 14 matchups in Atlanta, 12 and four in the last 16 matchups overall. So if you've been blindly betting overs in the Bucks Falcons rivalry, you are cashing out. So let's get into the Tampa Bay offense, and we'll start with Baker Mayfield off to a solid start. A couple rough games in there, but a couple really nice-looking games. So far amongst 35 quarterbacks, he's 8th in completion percentage, 10th in yards per attempt, 2nd in touchdown passes, 5th in passer rating. But there are a couple red flags here when it comes to Baker Mayfield this season. For one, he's holding on to the football a long time. He's 33rd in pressure to sack rate, 28th in time to throw. So he's not getting the ball out. If you're able to get pressure on Baker Mayfield, you can record sacks at a high rate. But that hasn't stopped the Bucks from putting up top 10 passing numbers this year. 10th in yards per attempt, second in success rate, 8th in EPA, 12th in DVOA. This has been a very effective passing attack. Now they're matched up against a Falcons defense that runs a lot of zone coverage. Over 76% of their defensive snaps have been in zone so far this year. That's tied for 8th most in the NFL, which is significant because Baker Mayfield has some nice looking numbers against zone coverage. Over 70% completions, over 8.3 three yards per attempt passer rating at 105 which is actually slightly better against man but obviously touchdowns and interceptions come into play uh, when we're talking about passer rating and then look at the pressure to sack rate seems to be holding on to the ball a little longer against man coverage rather than zone which i guess is good news because the falcons run a lot of zone coverage as we just pointed out another thing the falcons do a lot of cover three 42.1 percent cover three frequency fifth most in the nfl why is that significant because baker's been cooking on cover three fourth in completion percentage fifth in yards per attempt second in passer rating against cover three this year and on the fact that the falcons pass rush hasn't been very effective so far this year and we're looking at a real nice start to the handicap for the bucks and baker mayfield but actually what i want to talk about is the run game you look at the numbers on the year 21st in yards per carry 20th in success rate 12th in epa 24th in dvoa doesn't look like the Bucks have much of a rushing attack. And on the surface, it looks like the Falcons have a really nice run defense. They're seventh in the NFL in yards per carry allowed. But some advanced metrics indicate that the Falcons run defense is not that good. They're actually dead last in success rate, 26th in EPA, 20th in DVOA. Definitely a step backwards from last year. Last year, the Falcons were a top 10 run defense, maybe even a top five. Obviously, Nielsen is gone. They lost their defensive coordinator. He's over with the Jags now. And yes, it's only been a few games, but it looks like the Falcons run defense may be taking a step backwards this year. They've also had some injuries to linebacker. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to the injuries. Um, but now I want to pull up the Bucks rushing numbers. Look who might finally have a run game here. Last year, one of the worst rushing attacks in the NFL. 30th, 32nd, 27th, and 28th. Those are last year's numbers. This year, 21st, 20th, 12th, and 20th. And you might be looking at these numbers like, Kyle, that's not even that much of a jump. Why are we even talking about this? Well, hear me out. First two games of the season, the Bucks averaging just 92 and a half rushing yards per game, 3.7 yards per carry. So after two games, we were like, oh, same old Bucks. They can't run the ball for shit. But in weeks three or four, we see Bucky Irving starting to get involved. This Bucks offense is averaging over five yards per carry as a team in their last two games. 44.8% success rate. So Tampa might actually have a run game starting up here. And when we look at the Falcons defense, they open up the season great. 3.3 yards per carry in week one against the Steelers, just 34.1% success rate. So it was looking like, okay, Falcons are going to have a great run defense again. Look at the three games since then. They're allowing 4.6 yards per carry, 153 rushing yards per game, success rate over 50%. 
So this Falcons run defense hasn't been very good. And like I mentioned, they had some injuries. Well, check this out. Nate Landman is still out. That's one of their inside linebackers. Troy Anderson would be the guy starting in his stead. Troy Anderson is out for this game. So not only are they missing Landman, they're missing Anderson as well. I think the Bucs are going to run the ball in this game. I also think it's a favorable matchup for Baker Mayfield, but I like Tampa to run the ball. And that's so crazy to say, because last year the Falcons run defense was so good and the Tampa run game was so bad. If you told me last year that we'd be looking at this week five matchup, like, oh, Tampa's going to run the ball on the road in Atlanta. I would have said, get the hell out of here. But I think the Bucs are going to run the ball in the Falcons in this. So I'm definitely liking the Bucs so far, but we got to flip it around and look at the other side. Kirk Cousins amongst 35 quarterbacks, not off to the greatest start 22nd 23rd 29th and 31st in those four metrics passer rating passer grade big time throw rate turnover worthy play rate the falcons passing offense as a whole is definitely looking pretty average across the board 16th 13th 20th and 19th nothing really jumping out here Bucks pass defense has done a good job. They're struggling against the run, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but against the pass, sixth in yards per pass attempt allowed, 23rd in success rate per dropback, 13th in EPA, 13th in DVOA. The Bucks have done a pretty solid job defending the pass. And if there's one thing we know Todd Bowles is doing, it's running zone coverage, 84.4% zone coverage frequency this year. That's the most in the NFL. And just like Baker Mayfield, Kirk Cousins has definitely been better throwing the ball in coverage. Only these splits are even more extreme than Baker Mayfield's. Completion percent percentage against man 51.3 percent with the falcons receiving weapons that's crazy against zone coverage 73.7 percent yards per attempt up passer rating up pressure to sack rate up a little bit as well but kirk cousins definitely been more effective against zone coverage the bucks run a ton of zone coverage and just like the falcons bucks run a ton of cover three 45.5 percent cover three frequency that's third most in the nfl but unlike baker mayfield kirk cousins has actually struggled a little bit throwing the ball against cover three 23rd 20th 21st and 27th in these metrics against cover three so unlike baker mayfield who's lighting cover three up kirk cousins has actually been having some problems throwing the ball against cover three but i do have some good news for kirk cousins look at the falcons pass blocking numbers and you might be looking at these like kyle how is this good news they're 22nd in pressure rate 26th in pass blocking grade that's been a problem Problem. Keeping Kirk Cousins protected in the pocket has definitely been a problem so far, but it looks like Caleb McGarry is back at right tackle. He participated in a full practice. Looks like he's going to be returning from injury. Unfortunately, uh, Drew Dahlman is still out, but getting their right tackle back is huge. And also, Tampa Bay doesn't have much of a pass rush, man. I mean, they're 21st in pressure rate, 12th in pass rush grade, 26th in adjusted sack rate. The Bucs don't have a pass rush that really worries you like that. So Kirk Cousins should have time to throw in the pocket, and he's been much better when given a clean pocket this year, really struggling when pressured, which is kind of crazy because last year with the Vikings, he was actually one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL under pressure. This year, that hasn't been the case with the Falcons. I'm sure that will get better as the season progresses. He gets on the same page as the OC and the receivers and all that. But as of right now, he's really been struggling when pressured. He should have a clean pocket to throw from in this game against the Bucs. And you can see here, his splits much better when given a clean pocket. Unfortunately for Kirk Cousins, it's not quite that simple. This is a Todd Bowles defense, which means the blitz is coming top 10 in blitz frequency i mean i'm pretty sure todd bowles has had a top 10 blitzing defense every single year he's been in existence of the nfl so we know the blitzes are coming and kirk cousins has been struggling with the blitz this year you can see his numbers on the right side of this graphic much better when not blitzed bowles is going to blitz the shit out of kirk cousins and i definitely don't like that but as a whole with mcgarry coming back at right tackle i do think kirk cousins is going to have some clean pockets to throw from and i think he's going to make some throws so i, I expect the falcons passing attack to be there Not not an explosion, but I expect Kirk Cousins to make some plays. Now, what about the run game? Falcons this year, ninth in yards per carry, 18th in success rate, 27th in EPA, 10th in rushing DVOA. Been a little streaky. We've seen the run game look really good, and we've seen it disappear a little bit. Good news is they're playing the Bucks, and they can't stop the run for shit. 27th in yards per carry allowed, 25th in success rate, 32nd in run defense EPA. And Kalijah Kansi still out for the Bucks. He's going to miss another game. The good news, though, Vita Vea removed from the injury report. Obviously, one of the most important pieces of that Bucks defensive front. Also, Logan Hall 
was listed as questionable uh, as well. He's not listed on the injury report either. So both of those guys are going to play. They're missing Canty, and they're still missing Antoine Winfield Jr. We know this Falcons offensive line does a great job creating space in the run game. They're third in adjusted line yards, seventh in run blocking grades, sixth in yards before contact. Now that McGarry's back, this, these numbers could be even better. This is a great run blocking offensive line. The Bucs have been getting blown off the ball. <laughs> 14th in line yards, 30th in run defense grade, 27th in yards before contact. So overall on this side of the ball, I do think the Bucks blitz packages will give Kirk Cousins some problems, but I think I'll have some opportunities to make plays as well. The run game should definitely be there. I like the Falcons to move the ball as well. So give me the over. I took the over at 43 and a half. Already bet that. As we said before, the over is like 14 and two in the last 16 matchups between these two teams. That's not why I bet the over, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> I like the matchup for both offenses. I'm a little worried that they tend to run slower paces, but I think there's going to be a lot of scoring drives and they still they should get up and over 43 and a half. So like I said, I bet this over 43 and a half. If I was forced to pick a side here, I think the Bucks win this game. I like the matchup for the Bucks offense slightly better than I like the matchup for the Falcons offense. The problem is I think Atlanta is going to be able to run the ball. And I really don't want to take a road dog here against a team that I think is going to have the run game going. So I, I lean Bucks as far as a side, but as far as the bets I placed over 43 and a half, locked it in. If you want to see all the bets I have open, head over to kylecrims.com and click on open bets. You'll see a list of mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Also, when you sign up to Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord and you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 cash and one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested in that, head over to kylecrims.com and sign up. And actually the new week starts today. So depending on what time you're watching this, the deadline's 7 p.m. So if you want to get in on the new week, you got to go get your picks submitted on the website or in the Discord. So if you want to get in on that, head over to the website and sign up. Live show, 4 p.m. Eastern time. We'll go through this NFL game. I, I got some guests coming on, touchdown scores, props, all that. We'll talk about the college football games as well. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. Let's have ourselves a nice week five. NFL's been good to me so far. Hopefully that continues. Unfortunately, college football has not been so good to me. Hopefully that turns around. Please remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.